is intellective statistics, and I'll just give a broad overview. Um, the first thing to kind of do a priori to your study is really figure out what test you're going to conduct. So under the decision tree tab, you simply hit the decision tree, and then you just answer some simple questions like, I want to predict an outcome. Well, I want to predict a scale variable, and then I'm doing a linear regression. Okay. And um, so you can just, you know, if you're doing a quality improvement, want to look at differences over time, no between subjects, just two measures. Okay. Well, I'm doing... I'm doing a paired T test, okay? So that's the basics of the decision tree. Once we know what we're doing, um, the next thing to do kind of a priori is really look at the data analysis plan. So you simply click on data analysis plan, select the test that you're going to do, and select the test, and then there is the data plan, okay? All right, and now this is all downloadable, okay? And then you can edit it, but at least you know what the assumptions of the test are, and it's also referenced below. After we know basically what we're doing and what the assumptions of what we're doing are, the next thing we really want to look at is the sample size. So simply click power analysis, and I want to do a t-test, and it's a paired sample. And then there's my effect sizes, excuse me, there's my sample sizes for different effect sizes. And you can have a conversation about which effect size. Typically, medium uh, will suffice. So we would need 34 participants at pre and 34 at post. And then it's referenced and then also downloadable. Okay. All right. So that's kind of the a priori business. To get started, uh, you have to go under the projects tab and create a project. Okay. All right. So name a project, and now I can either upload data from Excel or Stata or SPSS, or I can enter in data. To enter in data, simply click Enter Data, enter variable names, variable one, variable two, A, B, C, okay, and one, two, three, oops. Okay. And then just click Upload Data. Okay. So that will have you validate the level of measurement. Um, you can change it later on, but um, level of measurement is really important. So this should be, you know, probably a good conversation about nominal, ordinal, and scale variables. And then hit Continue. And then there's your data. So that's how you enter data. The other way to kind of get data in is go to the Projects tab, go to Upload Data Set, create a project name, hit continue, and then select the uh, kind of file that you want to upload. Go to that data set, click open. It has you validate level of measurement, click continue, and that's it. Okay, so now that's two ways of getting data in there. Uh, I should say something about managing the levels of measurement. So, um, so for condition, maybe I don't want it to be a nominal level variable, but really ordered or ordinal variable. So I just simply click on ordinal. And then you can move these things around by left clicking the mouse and just scooching them in the correct order, hitting calculate, and now condition is an ordinal level variable. Okay. All right, so once we have data in, um, the next thing to do is to manage that data. So we can, for example, go to edit data and say, well, this is really a 17. Oh, um, this is really a 17. Okay, or change anything else and click save. And now your data is saved. You can also recode variables. And there's helpful scrollovers that really tell you what that task does or what that function does. After you've had managed data, you can go to download data, and then it will export it into a CSV file. Okay. The plots, you can, to plot data, simply click on plots, and you can see that there's nine different types of plots. Okay. So if you want to do a scatter plot, for example, 
is variable one. We'll select variable two. And maybe we'll group it by condition. Okay. Click submit. And then there's our plot. You can see it's more interactive when you can scroll over and kind of see what these points are. You can drill into just a few of these if you wanted to. You could also change the labels of the axes and titles and so forth, colors, and then export it as well. Okay, so if I wanted to edit to the analyses tab, just click that button. And then when I go to the analyses, that plot is there. Okay, um, so after we kind of upload the data, manage the data, plot the data, the next thing to do is to do some analyses. And I'll just run through a few of these. Um, word to the wise, always describe your data. My stats teacher told me, always describe the data, and it took about 10 years for me to get that message. So what happens is I go to conduct all my analyses, and I find out I have 117 in there instead of 17, and then I have to go do all my analyses again. So uh, it's a very, very good uh, policy just to um, describe your data. Okay. So we'll go to descriptives and descriptives. I'll select a few variables. Click add variables. Here are the variables I want to describe and click calculate. Now for the nominal and ordinal variables, it's going to give you frequency and percentages. So that's why it's really important if it's a nominal or ordinal var variable to have it labeled as such. Okay, so for these variables, we do want frequency and percentages. Okay. And it's starting to even to interpret it. So you can see that females, there's more females than males in the sample. And that write up says so much. Okay. For the scale level variables, there's means and standard deviations, okay? There's also scrollovers to help you understand what these different terms mean, okay? All right, and we'll go ahead and conduct the t-test. Here I'll do independent sample t-test. You can see the scrollover again, kind of make sure that you know what that means. And I'll select the DV, fine. I'll select an IV. By the way, if you go to select this and your variable is not listed here as a as a dependent variable option, then it's probably not listed as a scale variable. So you need to, again, make sure that that level of measurement is um, correctly identified. So I have time one by gender. Right, I want to see who has the fastest times. I hit calculate. So for each one of these tests, and it's a very robust program that, I mean, it really does everything from descriptive through structural equation modeling and everything in between. So for each of these different tests, the assumptions are preloaded. Here for the t-test, we have the assumption of normality. Well, it not only conducts the test, but it makes sure that you understand the interpretation of that test. We've also looked at normality here with a QQ plot. So instead of trying to figure out how to actually create it in another program, we just go ahead and provide it. To understand what that plot means, simply scroll over and you can see whether that looks more normal or perhaps more not normal. Another assumption, homogeneity of variance, Levine test was run and it was significant, okay. All right, so the results may not be reliable or generalizable. Yeah. And it says that it was really violated, that it was it's not supposed to be significant. They're supposed to have similar um, standard deviations, both males and females, on time one. Okay. So then we get to the results. The results of the test uh, was significant. Okay. And here we can see that males have... A higher time scores than females. And the, for each one of those tests, there's the interpretation of that test. So here, the mean of time when the female category of gender was significantly lower than the mean of the um, male category. And then there's an APA-like table and a plot. Now, 
there's lots of warning systems throughout the program too. So we noticed here that our assumption of normality was violated. So different tests have different assumptions. Some tests don't have assumptions. So this one does. And um, here, when normality is um, violated, okay, all right, uh, we're suggesting that you do a Man Whitney um, rank sum test, which does not require normality. So instead of going back and figuring out where that is, you simply click the button, and then it runs that Man Whitney for your data. Okay, and here we could see males have higher mean ranks than females. And the write-up says that much. Okay, I'll just do uh, one more for the fun of it. Um, go to regression, click on linear. I'll select the DV distance. I'll select an IV or IVs. So all we have to do is put in our DVs and our IVs. Click calculate. Again, just like all the other tests, the assumptions are preloaded. There's our plot, assumption of homoscedasticity, another assumption, and it tells you what this is. I mean, really, this is, we don't want these things to be highly correlated. And we tell you, hey, gosh, if it's, you know, over 5 or over 10, there may be a problem there. An outlier analysis, you can see participant number 26 may be an outlier. And then again, the results are in plain English. The results in the model were significant. Okay. Here we can see that time one was a significant predictor of distance. And here is the um, time one predicted distance. And then here's the interpretation of that. Okay. So when you increase time one by one unit, the distance will increase by 0.08 units. So that, those are the tests, um, so there's a couple of the tests. Then when we're finished, and by the way, you can move these things around if you wanted to, okay. I want the plot later on, okay. I may want to add notes to each of these things, okay. Add a note. Okay, so you can have individual notes associated with these tests. Then I'm ready to download my document. So I simply click download document. Here it is. So in the output document, it's really broken up into four different things. Um, the first thing is really just what we did. Okay. The next is we provide a glossary of terms and symbols for each of those. So descriptive, here are some of the terms and symbols. For regression, there's an overview, terms and symbols. Independent sample t-test, our man Whitney. The next we have is our raw output. And the raw output has a lot of the information that's in the write-up, but also provides information that's not in the write-up. For example, like mode and quantile. All right. After the raw output, then we have our results. This is an editable Word document. So I can say, well, I don't need all this stuff. And now I can start editing my document. Okay. Here's our descriptives, our linear regression. These are scalable figures. Okay. Tables are editable. And then even for all of the in-text citations, we provide APA style references for that. So you just have a pretty good working document very quickly. Um, to start to start editing. Other quick things I'll show are that uh, when you want to collaborate or share with um, faculty, you can go to the projects tab and simply click the gear 
and then I can share that document. And what goes with that, so if I put in your email address, what goes with that document is the data, the plots, the output, that is the analyses with any individual notes, and then um, and then that's it. And then it becomes a live document. So when you share it, any changes made to it um, become resonant on yours. So you're really working with one document as opposed to multiple versions. So it's kind of a, a nice feature to share. There are resources up here. And we're adding lots of other, what would be important is the YouTube channel. And uh, we're adding lots more videos as we speak, but there's different videos okay. you can look at, I'm trying to make them short. Um, so you can kind of just get into whatever you need to get into. And there's also consulting sessions. So um, some people really need more hand-holding. Uh, we offer consulting sessions. There's 12 of them for $99. So if you're working on your project, for example, click consulting sessions. All you do is hit, you know, register. All right. And then you're automatically registered. And then you'll get a, a go to meeting invite. And then, um, so you'll be able to be on the phone with the statistician. You can then sh see their screen and you can share your document. And then they can really have conversations around, you know, am I, I want to make sure I'm doing the right analysis. I want to make sure my data is set up correct. I want to make sure that, um, that I understand that output. And those consulting sessions can uh, assist with that.